Claudius Ptolemaeus, or Ptolemy, was a Greek astronomer based in Alexandria in the second century AD. He wrote one of the greatest texts in astronomy, the Almagest, which was basically a distillation of all Greek knowledge on the celestial world. Ptolemy believed that the sun, the moon, the planets and the stars all sat on crystal spheres that rotated around the earth. So the moon sits on the innermost sphere, followed by the sun and the planets, and finally a patchwork of stars on the outermost sphere. So we human beings sit at the very center of the universe, with the rest of the universe rotating around us. But as Ptolemy himself realized, there's a problem with trying to describe the heavens as a place of mathematically idealized perfect spheres. And that is that the planets don't really play ball. As they move across the night sky, they change speed, appear to get bigger and smaller, and even go back on themselves. Ptolemy tried to explain this away by arguing that the planets sat on small spheres called epicycles, which rotated around a bigger sphere called a deferent. This explained why they might look as though they were changing size and why they sometimes even change direction. Unfortunately, that still didn't fit all the facts. It didn't easily explain why the planets appear to speed up and slow down. So, rather desperately, Ptolemy fudged his model further by moving the Earth away from the center of the deferent and having the deferent rotate around an arbitrary point in space, the equant. But now, the works of astronomers like Albertani started to strain Ptolemy's ideas to breaking point. Their careful observations began to suggest that even with Ptolemy's unwieldy equants and deference, the actual behavior of the heavens didn't fit the data. So what do you do if you were an, uh, an astronomer living in Baghdad and you have all those results on your table? The very first requirement is to say, Huh? This Greek tradition is not as trustworthy as it is advertised to be. And now, of course, they begin to say, if the fundamental values of the astronomical tradition of the Greeks, which we could double check and we found them to be in error, what else is in error? They began to question now the more basic foundational astrology, astronomical, cosmological foundations of, uh, of, of the Greek tradition. And question they did. What's absolutely striking about the writings of Islamic scholars by the 9th century is the increasing use of the word shukuk, which in English means doubts. They showed that it's sometimes necessary to doubt an idea that everyone around you believes unquestioningly. Islamic doubting of Greek astronomy began the slow process of undermining the notion that the Earth is at the centre of the universe. To doubt takes great courage and imagination. But if the great dialogue between Islamic and European astronomers shows anything, it's that doubt, or shakuk, is the engine that drives science forward. One of the first great Shakuk scientists was called Ibn al-Haytham. He was born in the Iraqi city of Basra in 965 AD and was among the first to argue passionately that scientific ideas are only valid if they're mathematically consistent and reflect reality. And when he applied his fierce, rigorous intelligence to Greek astronomy, he immediately spotted that there was a fundamental contradiction at its heart. On the one hand, Greek cosmology argued that everything in the heavens revolves around the Earth. On the other hand, Ptolemy, in his Almagest, argued that if you want to mathematically predict how the sun and planets move, you have to pretend that they go around an arbitrary point in space, the so-called equant. This is clearly a contradiction. The heavens can't both go around the Earth and not go around it at the same time. 
Ibn al-Haytham hated this nonsensical contradiction. In the early 11th century, he wrote a paper, Al-Shukuk ala Bottlemius, or Doubts on Ptolemy. In it, he writes with barely contained frustration, Ptolemy assumes an arrangement that cannot exist. Ibn al-Haytham says that is a total absurdity. We cannot accept that. And furthermore, he says, it's not a slip of a tongue. Ptolemy knew that it was an absurdity, and he shows us where Ptolemy himself was embarrassed by having to introduce it. So he says there is a fundamental reasoning problem, meaning that the Greeks knew that Ptolemy knew that he was making a mistake, but he knew he couldn't do any better, and hence now the challenge is to do one notch better, and hence to be able to fix this aspect. That, in my explanation, begins to be the program of research for all astronomers to come. In order to achieve that project, you had to be convinced, you had to be convinced that it was possible to make high precision mathematical models of the way in which planets and stars move that would really capture how they are in the heavens. Ibn al-Haytham, in effect, laid down the challenge for all astronomers who followed, which was to come up with an explanation for how the heavens move that is both mathematically consistent and agrees with what we observe. <laughs> 